The CDC has released new data revealing widespread mental health issues among high school students. Millions of American teenagers are anxious and depressed. Child and adolescent mental health disorders are the most common illnesses that children will experience under the age of 18. Watching what's happening with isolation with our teens is heartbreaking. What I've seen a lot in the last few years is a lot of social anxiety. Just students not feeling comfortable in their own skin, not feeling comfortable in our building. Some of our students not feeling comfortable anywhere but their home. I like anxiety, so sometimes it just like isn't always the greatest and it doesn't help. Kids were not doing okay before the pandemic. They are not okay now. Obsessed with weight affects millions of teenagers. And health experts warn there's a fine line between trying to lose weight and developing a life-threatening eating disorder. What I thought would be best is to not eat. My calories dropped to like 300. I was eating nothing. I was keeping it all a secret. I would even eat at school. I would just hide it. I could not believe how I was able to function. There's so much going through athletes' minds when they're playing sports, from the pressures from parents to the need to win, and it could all have a chain reaction. The pressures of being a high-functioning athlete at all times while juggling also sports in school is really hard. Teachers always say that mistakes are always learning opportunities, except when you get into a game, you make a mistake and they pull you out. And they think that their whole reputation is built around them being perfect and living up to their highest capability. It's a struggle dealing with that. Social media has created a much different childhood for kids now than when we grew up. Studies show teens spend as much as nine hours a day on social media, and research shows alarming effects it's having on teenage girls. So on Instagram, there is an explore page, and it is pretty much your interests. So a lot of the time, there are pictures of females or males that are in either like swimsuits or whatever, and you're able to see them pretty easily, and they come up often. And I've personally seen other girls that have been negatively affected by it. I always knew I was a bit of a slut, but it wasn't until TikTok till I realized how much of a slutty little I am. Because they have this mindset that they're supposed to look a certain way and it disintegrates their own self-image. That is like so normal these days to like be completely transparent on the internet even if you're not fully comfortable about it. It is so refreshing to see creators out there who just don't give a f They're shameless. They're like, I'm gonna record in public, I don't give a I love it. I love to see it. Well, our kids, particularly our, our students who are in poverty and our students of color, are facing potentially generational challenges in terms of educational opportunity. The most recent government data from 2017 shows a large racial gap in our public schools. I think that when a school calls themselves diverse, when all their teachers are white, it's just kind of funny because how are you going to expect these kids to come to school and feel comfortable coming to school when nobody looks like them and nobody feels like oh, my teachers represent me. Female and LGBTQ students have been hit especially hard during the pandemic. Being accepting to like gender non-conforming and transgender students is honestly suicide prevention because like feeling like you're not accepted by the people around you is like so difficult to hear in your day-to-day -day life. But a lot of times it's difficult to self-advocate, especially if you're not like in like a district that like it's like normal and talked about for like things for to be different. Many counselors, many teachers, we do some amazing work from 7.30 to 3, and then I feel like it's Groundhog's Day. I come back the next day at 7.30, and I'm doing the exact same work because I'm undoing what happened once they left. Nationally, high school students are averaging three and a half hours of homework each night. Yeah, there's definitely a challenge working a, uh, a part-time job along with school because you just you do, you do have less time to do homework. This is my day. Waking up at six in the morning, getting ready for school. Always eat breakfast because you need to fuel yourself. I go to school and then I work four hours after the two hours of homework. 
going to work until nine. I usually work six days out of the week. And then whatever I can manage to get done after I completely wiped out is what I'm able to do. And then I repeat the process with less and less sleep each day. I'm tired. I have a lot of stress put on me after work and school. We just have so much outside of school to worry about as well. Middle and high school students who don't get enough sleep can suffer physical and mental health problems. Health experts are now declaring a national emergency when it comes to kids and their mental health. Self-harm for me has always been a way to like release stress as well as I simply just enjoy the feeling of cutting myself. I love seeing the blood run down. I love feeling the pain of me just slicing across my chest. And it's, it's an addiction, honestly. All the stress from everything starts just getting too much to handle, and I need something, <laughs> it's gonna sound terrible, but enjoyable to do. They harm themselves not to intentionally kill themselves. They do it to relieve emotional pain by feeling physical pain. Within the past decade, the teen suicide rate has surged by nearly 40%, and close to one in five high school students reported they'd seriously considered killing themselves. In middle school, I think I had one failed suicide attempt and then hospitalization due to self-harm. Freshman year, I think I had tried overdosing. With the increase in isolation, fear, and grief, the CDC has reported an increase in emergency room visits for mental health emergencies in kids ages 5 to 17 in the last year. After I got out of the hospital, I still did continue cutting myself. But after that, I finally started getting a little bit more of that help because they put me in therapy and stuff like that. And it's the first time I'm actually somewhat connected with my therapist. We're in the midst of a teen mental health crisis. Um, wait times for therapy are at all time highs. It is not unusual for a parent to call multiple providers and be told that it's at least six months before they can even get in for an evaluation. And usually by the time a parent is calling, things are pretty severe. Before the pandemic, before COVID, the needs for mental health intervention for our youth was increasing. The pandemic now has made it even more so that those needs are going to continue to rise and will continue to increase uh, moving forward. I stop talking! You do not come up to me, Dr. Shu. Get my face! What you're watching is a video that's gone viral, showing the explosive confrontation between a Lancaster student and a teacher. We're protecting the student's identity since we haven't confirmed his age. All right! Go sit down. The teacher asks him to sit down, but the student appears to get in his face while yelling obscenities. You think you are? If a student's escalated and they're seemingly coming at you, or it feels like they're coming at you, they're just releasing. And it is very easy for us as adults to forget that what things are positive about this youth and how is it that I am going to expose that and highlight that for the individual to get better and, and get better and get better. One of the things I believe that I use to build that trust with students to bridge that gap is I share my own personal experiences. I had struggles when I was young. I understand what it's like to feel frustrated. So I share. I try to connect. This is wild. <laughs> I try to connect because it's important. They need to know you're a human being and you're real. Parents that are heavily involved with the wellness of their children tend to have a better chance, if you will, at, at healing and, and, and getting through a very difficult situation. You have to ask kids questions. You have to ask them what's going on. We have this innate human need to connect, to connect with ourselves and to connect with other people. It's part of the fabric of what makes us human. Connection is prevention. We're not connecting with each other. So we might do an amazing job in our schools, but if that doesn't translate to home, it might not be enough. We might be doing an amazing job at the home, but if for whatever reason a school's lacking in certain supports or they're not doing their job, it might not be enough. If we're not doing enough in the community to combine with home and school, it still might not be enough. So when I think of failure, it's interesting because I think a lot of people are doing great work and people are being successful, but we're failing at connecting it all together.